With Thrawn coming to live action, I wanted to compare his character from his trilogy of books with his appearance in Star Wars Rebels. I want to look at what makes Thrawn so beloved and some of the things they need to avoid in his live action appearance to make this Thrawn's best appearance yet. Hello and welcome to Star Wars Grand Moff. I am the Grand Moff and today I want to talk about Mithra Nyrodo and his two main appearances in canon. I think the best way to compare the two is to look at both their opening scenes. This will be chapter one from his first book and his first appearance in Star Wars Rebels. The book opens with an unknown castaway running rings around an Imperial detachment of the ISD Strike Fast. Thrawn wishes to meet the Emperor and for this he has to play three cards as he puts it and the first card is getting entry to the strike fast and he goes through this elaborate plan to do so first he crashes one v-wing with monofilament line and steals the pilot's power pack blaster concussion grenades and communicator he then removes the pilot's body from the flight suit and replaces it with straw and berries he then makes these power packs into small bombs by removing the dousing rods and using them in an unfamiliar way. But the clever thing is, he knew that the Imperials would take the straw flight suit into camp and they had crushed berries within them that are law for small animals, allowing him to put, attach one of these bombs to the small animals and lead them straight into camp for the detonation. After this, stormtroopers come to assist the Navy troopers on the scene. But this is what Thrawn wanted, soldiers with fuller armour so that he could sneak into camp. In this time he crashes a second V-Wing and swaps the first communicator with the second, knowing that they would find out that he stole the first comm and cut the circuit. Then using the comm he creates feedback into the system creating a noise to mask the noise of him using explosives on two stormtroopers. He then sneaks into camp in the armour of one of the stormtroopers and in doing so making them think that only one stormtrooper is missing instead of two. By this time the Imperials have packed up, they've had enough. Although they are bound by protocols to stay and study Thrawn's settlement, they decide to take the whole settlement up to the ship with them, allowing Thrawn to hide within his settlement to get up to the ship. Before he does this however, he does use the second stormtrooper armour near the transport, propping it up with small sticks, and sets it to explode, making sure the Imperials leave as soon as possible for the ship. Did you find that complex? Well, it is. And I'm sure I missed out some of the bits, uh, but this tone set out in the first chapter continues throughout the whole book. Half this book is Thrawn outsmarting people in clever, elaborate strategies. It's like reading Sherlock Holmes. Thrawn is always one step ahead, or as he says, one step to the side, of his opponents. And this is what makes these novels so good. Let's compare that with the introduction in Star Wars Rebels. This scene starts with Thrawn joining the group of Imperials trying to stop the Rebels. We have seen all of the other people previously in earlier seasons. We have Grand Moff Tarkin, Admiral Constantine, Governor Price, and Agent Callus. We are informed that Thrawn is a Grand Admiral, which tells the audience that he is a higher rank in the Navy than anyone else in the room. His white uniform also makes him visually different from the rest of the cast of Imperials. They talk of Thrawn's promotion and that there were a lot of civilian casualties, implying to the audience that Thrawn is an evil person who kills innocents. However, if you've read the book, then you would know in the Battle of Baton, it was actually Governor Price who caused all the civilian casualties, not Thrawn. This works for two reasons. One, if you haven't read the books, you think Thrawn is this villain, which works for the role of him in Rebels. And two, if you've read the books, it's a nice nod back to them. Thrawn then tells the others the Rebels' entire plan to get the fighters and threatens to defeat them. For me, this is like Thrawn Light or Diet Thrawn. I understand they made it simpler for the audience, but did they have to? As you can tell from my complex narration of chapter one of the book, I like the layers to Thrawn's plans. 
I like the complexity to it. This reminds me so much, as I said before, to Sherlock Holmes, and I compare it to the Sherlock Holmes series. And that was incredibly popular. It was complex plans and stories made simple for the audience to understand, like the big reveal at the end. This is what I want to see with Thrawn in live action. But alas, I really don't think we're going to get it, but I would love to see it. To summarise, don't dumb down Thrawn to the audience. Make it easy to explain, but keep the complex strategies. Is Thrawn evil? When comparing the two versions of Thrawn, I have seen other videos saying that Thrawn is too evil in Rebels, and they always refer to this scene. Now in this scene, Thrawn is conducting an inspection of the Lothal weapons factory, where a lot of the equipment is malfunctioning. And I do quotation marks for that, malfunctioning. He informs the workers that they will test each of their products that they make. And this indeed objectively is evil, as he does make one of them die from it. However, I believe this is something Thrawn would do. It shows that Thrawn has no mercy for his enemies, and this is the same in the books and in Rebels. This man is a co-conspirator, and he has killed several Imperial officers by deliberately sabotaging the equipment. And bear in mind, these men are Thrawn's men. Thrawn is in a war with these Rebels, and it makes sense that he wouldn't show any mercy to his enemies. So Thrawn would have no problems with killing an enemy, and with this creative solution, the problem is fixed in the quickest and most efficient way possible. That sounds like Thrawn to me. You need to also remember one key difference between the novels and Rebels. Thrawn in the books is the protagonist, the main character slash hero. And I use quotation marks again for hero as I use that very loosely. And in Rebels, he is the antagonist slash villain. Quotation marks on the villain. Now for this to work effectively, it has to be framed correctly by the writers. And it's all about point of view. Thrawn's first book, we see his greatness through Eli Vanto. We see his respect and admiration towards Thrawn. We also see it through other people who work for the Empire. Thrawn is this hero of the Empire. Whereas in Rebels, we see Thrawn from the point of view from the Rebel. This makes a big difference, because if you look at Thrawn through the uh, Imperial lens, like I said, he's a hero, and if you look at him through the Rebel lens, he's a villain. It's balancing these two elements that is key. Thrawn is not necessarily an evil person. I would say he's more towards a neutral role, but he does evil things, and he justifies them through saying it's for the greater good, or it's to stop the greater evil. So in Thrawn's mind, he is doing the right thing. Or should I say, the just thing. The thing he knows he has to do to avoid the greater evil from taking over. Things to avoid in live action. I have two key examples of Thrawn's appearance in Rebels which I dislike, and I think are not keeping with his character. The first is very, very minor, but you know how nitty gritty I can get, and it's this scene here. Thrawn loses his shit over something so minor, such a minor reason, and it's not consistent with everything else we know about Thrawn. I can't think of any other time in either Rebels or the novels where Thrawn loses his temper to this extreme, or even at all. This makes him seem really unstable and could flip on a moment's notice. This is not the case at all. Thrawn is calm, cool, and confident, even when he's being taken away by space whales controlled by a wizard. My second biggest criticism of Thrawn in Rebels is how he deals with Admiral Constantine. I want to be clear on a few things before I go into depth on this. I understand why they did this. I understand that it needed to happen for the plot to work. Let me explain if you don't know what I'm talking about. Constantine grows resentful at Thrawn, um, as he was meant to deal with the rebels, and now Thrawn is doing it. He's basically been replaced. Thrawn is a much better tactician. Constantine is a poor tactician, and he can't really understand or appreciate Thrawn's tactics. And this is shown very clearly when they are in a key battle, and Thrawn has 
the rebels cornered and because of Constantine's mistake by his ship going out of position it gives the rebels an opening to escape. The writers are trying to balance Thrawn being all-knowing versus the rebels have to escape so they need a way for this to happen. I understand that but Thrawn is an amazing commander to his subordinates regardless of whether he likes or dislikes them he sees them all as resources and they need to be used efficiently. An example of this in the books is when Thrawn is studying to become an officer at the Royal Imperial Academy. Three cadets attack him and what does he have done to them? He sends them to a better academy after studying their aura and determining that they would make great starfighter pilots. And instead of punishing them, he puts them on the path where they can be most effective for the Empire. He also states that he wishes that Orbar, the cadet who ordered the attack on him, he hopes that he grows from this ordeal and becomes a better person. Compare this to the scene where Thrawn sends Admiral Constantine in a light cruiser to fight the rebels. He even baits him into doing it by saying, oh, surely a man of your skill could do it in just a light cruiser. This doesn't make sense for Thrawn. If Thrawn wants to catch the rebels while also making his subordinates shine, he would have given Constantine the tools and resources to catch them as well as the best strategy to do so like i said thrawn doesn't like or dislike characters he just gets on with it he sees them as resources i really dislike constantine he's meant to be the babbling fool who thinks that he's the best he's the typical imperial officer but in this case thrawn acts like that thrawn acts like every imperial officer who makes their subordinates look bad thrawn doesn't do this and I hope they don't do this in live action. In the first book, he even talks about leadership and he says, A leader is responsible for those under his authority. That is the first rule of command. He is responsible for their safety, their provisions, their knowledge, and ultimately, their lives. Thrawn's main goal. Thrawn's main goal has always been to keep his people, the Chiss, safe. The Empire and serving it is merely a tool to assist in strengthening the Chiss against the enemies like the Grist. So if Thrawn comes back in live action, I hope these goals stay the same. His main priority is to his people and secondly to the Empire. He may decide that he wishes to rule the Empire so that it becomes strong and then he can protect his people against the enemies or the greater evil as he sees it but let me know what you think is thrawn going to be good in live action what do you love about thrawn and what could they have done better with him let me know in the comments below and if you like this sort of video then there is a button for that as well i have been the grandma and you myth. <laughs>